Hello, Christian Livingstone here, and it's time for me to enjoy the fruit of my labor. And here's some of it. The melons, the cantaloupe, sugar cube variety. I dig them, and uh, I'm going to start enjoying them right now. But uh, we'll get back to the labor part about how it all came about, because, uh, you know, it, it wasn't just a, a snap of the fingers. There, there was some, uh, some labor involved. But anyway... I'll get to the fruit part first. These uh, cantaloupe uh, variety are rather small. They're called sugar cube, and uh, I'll just talk a, a little bit about uh, why they're different and uh, I think better. Uh, they don't really look like a typical cantaloupe. They're round, they're not oval. You don't see the uh, uh, webbing so much. The, the netting is pretty even and, and consistent, but uh, uh, they're good because they have a small uh, uh, seed cavity, so, you know, a lot of the melon is taken up by that seed cavity. So even though they're small, you get, there's a lot of flesh to them. And the sections will look like this, and I got some peeled here. Soft and juicy, good flavor, sweet, just uh, hard to beat. And uh, I was out there picking them today with my little plucker. Really is handy, just reaching out there, plucking them. So let me get to the uh, labor part, how it all came about. My neighborhood uh, on the uh, next street over where I came from. So, you know, I'm still friends with those people over there, and a lot of the neighbors uh, uh, are quite helpful, and I, we do each other favors. And a big favor today, and why I'm capturing this now while it's still in this uh, ugly, barren state, is because uh, I'm probably uh, going to get uh, a couple of loads of uh, limestone to uh, edge and border this whole uh, area. Uh, out with limestone. Limestone looks good. I like it better than red bricks or little picket fence to border this off, but uh, it's going to be free to me and uh, I'm going to be uh, getting a, a load or two and uh, you'll see how it looks. Okay? Stick around. And here's a little clip to uh, contrast uh, what it looked like four months ago. It's uh, dramatically different and in a good way. A friend uh, over there at the other neighborhood, he got a load of rock free. They were uh, breaking down some historic building or something, and, uh, and th there was a, a dump truck load uh, getting ready to go to the dump. And, uh, you know, my uh, neighbor friend said, hey, why don't you just drop it over at my place? It's closer. So he did. He got this big load of uh, really cool limestone uh, rock and uh, didn't cost him anything. So uh, he's going to share some with me. I've shared things with him in the past, but you'll see. We'll uh, go there, and uh, you'll you'll see the big pile. Yeah, yeah. Here's my neighbor. He's uh, giving me some rock. Uh, he's been a good neighbor. My other neighbor uh, is helping me load this baby up. So here's the rock. Here's the truck. It's kind of different shape. And I'm working uh, from the back of my uh, unregistered, unlicensed, uninsured uh, pickup truck bed. Uh, it seems the best thing to do. The wind's kicking up a little bit, but uh, instantly uh, you got this uh, pressure uh, uh, check valve here, 25 PSI I think it is, and then it uh, steps down to the... Uh, to the uh, half inch line, the three quarter... Uh, line and then you add this so you get down to this uh, half inch and you can go into this. I'm going to add a, a Y gate uh, at the end here so I can put a little uh, small hose reel for uh, I'll, I'll just shut this off sometime and then I'll uh, uh, spot spray some of the uh, seed sites. Okay and here's where the uh, four way is going to uh, tee off into the uh, the actual brown soaker lines from this uh, just poly tubing, no perforations uh, into the uh, the garden itself. So this is where the games begin. Yeah, it's going surprisingly well and fast and easy. I might uh, deviate from the uh, pattern a little bit uh, just in case I'm tending to uh, run out of line there. 
the packet uh, came with uh, 50 foot of the uh, brown or was it 25 I forget but I had an extra 100 foot so I'll make it one way or another but I might deviate from the pattern and for the bitter ends of these uh, hoses they don't give you a plug they use this uh, mechanism here I, I guess you just fold it over and uh, that's your that's your dead stop unlike uh, you know how I daisy chained uh, these other ones uh, back to themselves this is the only one with a bitter end and uh, you know I don't know it looks a little odd but uh, I'm sure it'll work fine but yeah there it is there's the rough layout you know I might change some things you can see I deviated a little bit uh, from the diagram in the middle there okay and I got some more rock from my neighbor around the corner uh, I, I fixed a tiller uh, and a mower for him so he was uh, uh, happy to give me uh, rock and that's really what I wanted so uh, I've got some and this is a, a, a last look before the uh, plastic goes down it's kind of nice and cool today so uh, it's a, a good time it's late in April and uh, the timing is just right I, I want to start planting stuff and uh, the plastic I want to go down and that'll kill all this uh, little grass and weeds here and uh, so I'll probably leave it th that way for a couple of weeks before I plant stuff just to kill stuff underneath uh, to begin with and uh, you know here's the uh, here's the uh, uh, drip lines and you know that's what I did I, I kind of took a note from that neighbor around the corner I'll, I'll show a clip uh, of him using that tiller and uh, you'll see some uh, black soaker lines uh, he had uh, uh, laid out and, and his black plastic went over those soaker lines these are not soaker lines but very nearly the same a, a drip uh, system under the plastic uh, to conserve on the water because it's on the landlord's dime and uh, I'm sure he doesn't want me to uh, you know splash out uh, uh, too much water and uh, this will uh, take care of that it'll conserve on it uh, pretty well I think so otherwise uh, maybe I'll just uh, show you where I'm getting my uh, water supply itself I had to kind of come quite a distance with the hose it's about 120 feet or so see it all around the base of the building here, all the way around. And I've got the hose, you know, pinned down with those little little clip staples. And there it is, the spigot. So yeah, that's all I do. I just come around the corner, open that baby up, and uh, it's working. If I would have gotten one of the uh, electronic uh, uh, magnetos that you know gets rid of the uh, points and condenser, it has a wire that you can use for a, a kill switch. Oh, okay. But uh, I think that's how this one was. Just uh, uh, you know, you choke it to kill it. There was no kill switch. You can make make them do a kill switch, but yeah, uh, thank you very much. Oh, sure, no sweat. Yeah, it, uh, you knocked it out in no time. Well, it was chilled up last year, so and then covered all year, so nothing really grew in it. And here's the plastic going down. I went uh, uh, di or, uh, side to side uh, rather than uh, lengthwise. Uh, I don't know if the uh, rolls were long enough to go that way, and it was just easier to pin them down from side to side. 
Uh, but there it is. Uh, that's two uh, rows done. I've got uh, uh, two partial uh, rolls to uh, complete this. I, I don't think it's enough. I'm just going to buy another roll and uh, do it and then have a little trim piece down below here. But uh, there's the uh, drip line underneath and, uh, you know, it's kind of happy to get it kind of covered because I don't know if it was a Freudian slipper or something, but uh, the way I laid out and daisy chained these uh, drip lines and, uh, you know, there was a circle in the middle and two smaller circles down below and it uh, protruded up to the, the head there. It looked like, uh, you know, male and female genitalia having a party or something. It was uh, kind of funny looking, but uh, yeah, no, it's going well. Okay, and here's my uh, take and my intention on uh, uh, making a, a vertical or at least a raised uh, vine uh, canopy for the uh, melon vines to uh, climb up on, not go too high. And uh, you can see I'm using the uh, angle iron down there as a straight edge for uh, bending mostly. And at those bends there, 45 degree uh, angle bends, uh, I scored the uh, the wire there just to make it easier and, and uh, a better bend and left some little uh, tangs uh, to stake down into the ground. But uh, that's how it's going and uh, it's going well. I got this uh, cattle guard uh, from uh, a neighbor uh, for some mower repair and uh, it's it's going to work well I think. Okay and there you can see the cage or canopy. It uh, goes up diagonally and then uh, goes horizontal so it's not really a vertical uh, uh, you know cantaloupe uh, scheme you know normally you'd see these kind of panels uh, they put a couple of few stakes in and just uh, do them straight up and you know beans and vines would grow straight up but this is a uh, diagonal and uh, horizontal raised and uh, I plan to uh, put some lettuce underneath uh, leaf lettuce and that'll uh, shelter the lettuce from the hottest part of the sun and uh, the cantaloupe uh, will hope hopefully have uh, less tendency to bottom rot because they'll be suspended and uh, maybe they'll even uh, uh, slip themselves when they're ripe just by the weight. These are small cantaloupe, this uh, variety I've got here. I bought some seeds. I put some of my uh, seeds from uh, the last harvest in here too, so they're kind of mixed together, but uh, you know, I just thought, eh, I better start fresh because uh, sometimes you can have uh, cucumbers uh, pollinate the uh, uh, cantaloupe and uh, then the next season they'll be off. I don't want to be off. But anyway, uh, I'm finally putting some seeds down. I, I kind of wanted to linger a little longer and uh, let this black plastic kill everything underneath. So I can still feel that, you know, some of the stuff is probably still alive. I don't know. But I'm putting some uh, seeds right around this cage uh, just to get the vines going up at first and then uh, the rest I'll, I'll plant uh, in uh, I don't know, every three weeks for maybe three segments so all the melons don't come at one time. So uh, this is what I'm using for the soil. I'll remove some soil. I'll just put a, a crisscross X like I did uh, up on that stuff and uh, remove some soil, put some of this uh, compost uh, manure stuff uh, and uh, mix in a little bit of uh, time-released uh, fertilizer. It's uh, 15, 7, and 15. And, uh, and just get this party started. Okay, I've decided that uh, now is about the right time to plant some of the uh, leaf lettuce under this canopy. The vines of the uh, cantaloupe uh, are uh, getting up uh, on that pretty well. And if I, I plant the uh, uh, lettuce seed uh, now, they'll be just about right uh, and germinated by the time that's covered. So uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use some of the manure again, composted manure uh, for the uh, seeding sites. I'm not going to put too many in, you know, maybe half a dozen or more, eight, uh, nine maybe. But uh, I've got just enough room to crawl under there when I need to uh, pluck out those heads, uh, you know, I, I've got enough room, but I, I don't want to put them in too far. But otherwise, uh, I'm going to focus in on uh, some of this stuff here. Here is the uh, drip system, and uh, this is actually the one that came with it. A lot of the people on uh, Amazon complained about this, uh, and rightly so, but it's a very minor problem. They uh, were uh, suggesting that you buy this assembly, which is from a, a different company, but, you know, uh, I think two of the uh, uh, parts are identical, and there is one problematic part. We'll uh, uh, 
touch on that uh, here in a minute. Uh, it's it's a, an easy fix, and uh, I, I didn't need to buy that. It was it was cheap, but I did anyway, just because everybody was uh, uh, not everybody, but many people were saying that one's far superior. It's a it's a little better, is what it is. But uh, really, the uh, biggest thing I, I want to do. Uh, here is install this uh, flow meter. I want to find out how much water I'm putting uh, down under the plastic. Uh, I mean, you know, I really don't need to know. The, the plants are doing quite well and, uh, you know, that's my guide to know. You know, I'm not doing too little or too much. It's, uh, honestly, these uh, plants look better than ever. I mean, I'm surrounded by uh, concrete and I think that's the reason. There's just no bugs or anything that the leaves are uh, there's no blemishes whatsoever they the plants all look just fantastic strong healthy so i'm guessing that's what it is there's just a uh, no bugs no aphids no no nothing to bother me that way but uh i'll uh i'll put the camera down so i can use both hands and uh, talk about this a minute okay and here's the uh, quick fix uh again on this part it's this part. We want to take it down to the uh, nub there. Just shave off some of that collar. Here's the belt sander. doesn't have to be perfectly square but uh, I think I came pretty close yeah down to the nub and then as you'll see it will have a gap up top here because it'll see down I can already feel it touching touching the washer before it gets near seating that area so if you've got a gap there then you know it's it's going to be leak free that's that's not it it's it's tight very tight and uh, no leaks so that's all you got to do so this is a cheapo uh, flow meter it was uh, about fifteen dollars this is the second one i bought the first one i bought uh, just as soon as i put it on uh, it was springing leaks and it was like a, a a sprinkler there was leaks coming out of the side and in the back is where the little battery goes and <clears throat> I can't seem to get that out uh, right now because well maybe I got something better to get more leverage there You see in there I filled that with some glue now on the first one I uh, got uh, I tried to fill it in because it was leaking back here here's where the little leads for the battery uh, and uh, you just put the battery on and screw it on and, and it touches those uh, two small metal leads but uh, it was shooting water from behind here filling this up with water and so uh, I initially tried with uh, super glue but uh, the super glue was uh, it, the, the viscosity was too thin and it got in and gummed up the works and uh, it stopped it from working so I, I put some different glue this time that's uh, a little thicker it sets up a little better than uh, super glue so that's what I'm uh, trusting will uh, prevent this one from leaking and I did use the super glue around the edge here that was effective on the last one but uh, that's where I'm going with this uh, solution to uh, that problem that I had with the first one I mean I don't uh, really need to leave this on I just want to get the figure and uh, so I'm going to install this on the line there and uh, 
then we'll know how many gallons per minute is uh, going under there, just for my reference. And uh, then I can, you know, more accurately uh, uh, be conservative with the water and uh, know how much is going under there, okay? This uh, reacher grabber thing, uh, a few years ago, maybe four years ago, I uh, utilized one of these to uh, make a melon picker. And as you can see, uh, you know, right out of the box, that won't uh, pick a melon. But uh, I did uh, 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 utilize some of this uh, stainless steel uh, uh, tubing. I did an exhaust system uh, several years ago, and I still had some uh, uh, extra stock left. And uh, I'm going to use uh, that again, and uh, I'm making some templates to uh, just uh, trace out onto the... Uh, tubing and then I'll cut it. Uh, I don't have a plasma cutter anymore so I'm making these lines uh, straight for the uh, cutting disc on my uh, angle grinder. That'll be pretty much how it'll go. I'll arch it a little bit and have it so that uh, it'll just uh, pluck melons. Now the uh, initial design I did uh, a few years ago worked well enough but this will be an improvement because it'll have the, uh, the two uh, uh, claws uh, up front. Before it only had one and, and that sometimes it would slip out but uh, I used it uh, effectively enough for a couple of years and it finally uh, fell apart uh, you know because I, I used it pretty hard but I think this will be even better so uh, then I'll just uh, uh, cut a little uh, slot in here and straighten these up but I'll include uh, just the little welding portion. Yeah that's pretty good there. So I'll just rotate that around and give it the same kind of tack. There's one to wander on me. Alright, I'm not even going to drag the filler out there. And I'll do it a light tack just to see if it moves and I'll be able to compensate for that. Very light. Got about 90 amps on tap here. I don't know how many I'm actually using, probably 50 or so. While it's still hot, I'll take that off. I need to make any adjustments so I can, but no, I'm thinking it's bending a little. Yeah, that opens wide enough to get to that big melon. So I'll go ahead and uh, tack these in uh, better. You can see how I just uh, cut cut a slot uh, in the uh, stainless steel here. Because this had a little 90 degree uh, leg or flange on it to give it more strength. So I, I just wanted to leave that the way it was. You can see it in there. I'll uh, tack it up uh, inside, outside, just at the uh, head, and then a couple back in the uh, edge there, and be done with it. Okay, the first wave of melons isn't quite ready. Uh, it, it's getting close, but uh, as you can see, there's uh, plenty of these uh, little uh, grape tomatoes. I'm going to pluck uh, a bunch of those. I, uh, I'm intending to use these... Uh, tongs for my uh, a barbecue grill because they get in there and they grab those little suckers. The uh, cage uh, mesh material I used, it, the weave is uh, kind of tight so you can't really get your fingers uh, uh, or hands through them too far but uh, you know you can go over the top and reach down but in some cases uh, you know I'm resorting to these or I might even just uh, snip out some of that uh, mesh to make bigger holes in the side walls. But other than that, uh, plenty of peppers too. I'm probably going to pluck some of those uh, peppers, those banana peppers, and uh, grill them up with some uh, cream cheese and ranch uh, uh, dip uh, mix and wrap them in bacon. There's uh, some MMA uh, cage uh, fighting uh, uh, going to uh, go on uh, tonight. It's a Saturday. It's... Uh, I think uh, Edmonton, uh, Canada, uh, UFC uh, uh, 240. And so uh, I'm going to grill up some uh, ra bacon wrapped uh, peppers with cream cheese. Okay, there it is from the garden to the table. 
peppers, stuffed, bacon wrapped, yummy. Take a look under that uh, under that uh, cage uh, I set up there. I, I'm thinking uh, that uh, you know having those melons suspended isn't uh, really necessary uh, to uh, uh, combating that uh, bottom rot. I'm thinking now that uh, because I put the uh, uh, drip system under the plastic, the plastic's always uh, dry on top, and I, I'm thinking that might have been what was uh, causing more bottom rot at my old place, since I lavishly threw the water out on top due to the uh, well water costing zero. Uh, you know, that was causing it, so, uh, but I'm still, we'll, we'll take a look at what those look like uh, suspended underneath. Several melons uh, suspended, some are touching the bottom, some are not. But yeah, I'm liking it. I'm liking uh, the fact that uh, they haven't pulled off uh, any vines. We'll see how it goes. Okay, and the melons are starting to uh, ripen now. And uh, like I probably mentioned already, <clears throat> the way you can tell is when they turn that, uh, that uh, pale yellow. And uh, zoom in there. And it's uh, very distinct. And, you know, uh, today when I came out uh, uh, early this morning, I, I could tell there's a, another one over there. It's yellow. It's kind of hard to see in the shadow, but uh, once you get an eye for it, you, you can't miss it. See, this one is not uh, quite ready, but uh, the, the difference is uh, very clear. That pale yellow, boom, they're ready. And uh, there's quite a few out here, but this is the first uh, planting in this, uh, uh, you know, this uh, first quadrant or, or third. Uh, and then I planted some a little later. and further down it's uh, later still so I'm gonna get to uh, plucking some of these babies with my uh, my plucker and uh, out in the middle here you know I'm gonna have some difficulty if I drag my butt out there I'd probably damage plants and vines so uh, there's a few skinny little gals in the neighborhood I can recruit to uh, tiptoe out there and uh, pluck the melons in that uh, sea or ocean of melons there. My old place had the rose and it, it wasn't problematic that way. So I'm going to get to plucking and uh, see how many we get on this uh, uh, first little, little cropping or culling. Right, so they don't slip easy, I believe it. I don't think so. 
I want to uh, do is clarify a, a little bit about this uh, drip uh, tubing. And, you know, because in the video I uh, refer to, uh, you know, these as mere perforations. They're not. These are uh, engineered uh, membranes by uh, Rainbird, and uh, there are no uh, mere uh, perforations. I, uh, I thought I captured a video uh, of the system before I put the plastic down, uh, charged with, uh, uh, you know, that uh, uh, 25 PSI, just to see uh, if it does uh, water evenly underneath, you know, not, uh, you know, most of it going at the beginning of the run and then down to, towards the end, it's just a trickle. No, they've engineered this quite well, and the pressure is even throughout. That is the watering, the drip is coming out evenly throughout the whole system and maybe I captured it on my uh, my uh, phone camera and, and then deleted it but uh, this camera here is, is not my phone I, I have a, a particular camera I use for this kind of stuff uh, but uh, somehow I, I, I didn't have it uh, captured when I thought I did but uh, I did I charged the system and I was impressed with uh, how even it was throughout so uh, I just uh, I cut away I cut away the tubing so you can see it's a it's a an interestingly engineered I, I, I don't know how to articulate it or explain it but it's something it's something that's uh, quite good and uh, it's no mere perforation and you know this tubing I might have mentioned has these uh, membrane perforation openings uh, every 18 inches and it's just been doing great you know so yeah it's no mere perforation that is a brilliantly engineered membrane in there soft and juicy good flavor sweet just a uh, hard to beat I'm gonna conclude this uh, video and uh, wrap it up uh, with uh, just a, an overview or a recap of uh, some of the costs involved it wasn't much as you can see this is uh, what I bought this kit and then I added uh, I think it was a an, an additional 100 feet of this stuff maybe 75 but uh, yeah so uh, you know under a hundred dollars easily for these materials but uh, then there's uh, the plastic and I used uh, 10 foot by 25 foot uh, three rolls of this stuff six mil thick there were other dongles and uh, little add-on things that I did uh, that were unnecessary but uh, uh, you know not very costly at all so you know I'm guessing this uh, whole uh, uh, out-of-pocket expense uh, for that uh, garden was about 200 bucks maybe uh, otherwise the uh, drip system under the plastic I really dig that now at my old place uh, you know it worked well uh, because of the setup I had uh, which was uh, uh, well water in this uh, whole area here I had uh, plenty of room and uh, I, I did it on raised rows uh, with plastic over it and uh, I had well water and so I could just lavishly uh, throw uh, the water on top but uh, I think that uh, is what uh, led uh, to uh, having the bottom rot. I think I was just throwing so much water around there and oftentimes I'd leave the sprinklers on uh, out there just to keep uh, the uh, landlord's kids uh, away from my area because you know they'd wander all over the place and bring the dog and the dog would uh, run and jump and perforate the plastic a little bit so I just turn the sprinklers on and you know that'd keep them away because uh, you know the two properties kind of bled into each other but uh, you know, I had my so-called defenses with the, the sprinklers. I'd turn on various uh, locations because I put the sprinklers throughout the whole property. Both uh, structures and dwellings, uh, you know, enjoyed the uh, water from the... Uh... Let me just uh, turn that on and show you. At no cost, and, uh, you know, it's just the uh, electricity to, to get the pump going, and uh, you're off and running, so... You know, you can throw water at this. You don't have to get real fancy with drip lines or anything. If you've got well water, you know, use it. And, uh, you know, don't be ashamed. Oh, am I not using water efficiently? You know, water isn't ever lost. It's, you know, the 
atmosphere of the earth and evaporation. It's a closed system. This water may So anyway, uh, that was the old place. Uh, you know, there, there was even more that you couldn't see, but uh, lots of room. And, you know, you can see I can roll down here on the uh, a cycle and just uh, pluck melons uh, without, uh, you know, having to get on the plastic in any way. You know, that uh, grabber arm worked real well down these uh, aisleways. And, uh, you know, what I got going now with the uh, drip system under the plastic is, is working well, too. I can pluck most of them easily. And, uh, you know, there's a, a neighbor uh, a gal who has a, a young uh, boy. And, you know, the boy wants to see what I'm doing with uh, the melon. So I, I let him wade out into the... Uh, the uh, sea of melons and pluck uh, pluck them uh, rather than drag my butt uh, into there and damage all the the vines and the plants and stuff. So uh, yeah, no, it's uh, it's working great uh, at my new place here, the apartment. But I do I uh, I, I do have uh, uh, you know a lot of favorable uh, uh, memories of, of this old place. It was big. I had plenty of water and uh, you know, but. I think the new is better without uh, uh, watering over the plants, and that's how you get the moisture under the melons and, and the bottom rot. I, I would imagine at my old place, I might have had as much as 10% uh, 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 spoilage due to that, but I, I was kind of a wild man with the water. I, I would leave that water running for two hours sometimes, think nothing of it. But that was the downside. You got a little uh, uh, spoilage uh, via bottom rot. But at the new place, uh, uh, at the apartment, uh, I haven't had any bottom rot yet. So I'm thinking it's uh, that was the solution. To have the drip system under plastic is superior to watering over uh, melons, you know, especially on cantaloupe. Now, I never got bottom rot on the... Uh, 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 watermelons. I had a couple rows of watermelon uh, down on this other side, and uh, you know that was never a problem. But on the cantaloupe, you get if you're watering over the top uh, uh, lavishly, uh, that undoubtedly is the uh, main contributor to the uh, bottom rot. So no more bottom rot. Goodbye. And these are the uh, uh, costs again. You you can see, but uh, yeah, and uh, you know. A lot less time involved with the uh, drip system under the plastic. I mean, just just the time and you know, uh, keeping the water on. It's like 10 minutes uh, under the plastic, and I'm done. You know, over here I would, uh, you know, it, you know, two hours. You know, you'd want to return. You know, to turn off the water, and uh, you know, don't don't be away for too long. But this, uh, you know, you don't even have to be be away. You can just 10 minutes, uh, turn it on, turn it off, boom, you're done. So yeah, it uh, it was great. It was a, a, a really a, a nice thing that uh, you know I could do to throw that uh, melon garden at my new place, even though there's you know no well water and it's a, a smaller uh, uh, area. It uh, turned out real well, and uh, I'm quite happy. And if anybody's out there wondering some of these same things, you know, do I use impact? Do I water over the top? Should I go uh, consider going under with the uh, Drip system, yeah, go under. Go under with the drip system. Even if you have well water, I'd go under just to alleviate any of that bottom rot tendency. And, uh, you know, like I said, I'm not worried about the water. You know, the water's never lost. But if you're paying, you know, for city water or some other uh, water source, uh, yeah, you know, conserve on water just for the sake of, of money. Okay, that's it. That's uh, uh, the end of this project. Uh, I hope you had fun. I had fun doing it, and maybe we'll see you next time. Okay? Bye-bye.